Class E airspace is controlled airspace. However, there is no requirement to call air traffic control or obtain a clearance to enter Class E under visual flight rules. For VFR flying, the main difference between Class E and Class G airspace, which is uncontrolled, are higher visibility and cloud clearance requirements for VFR flight into Class E. For this reason, Class E airspace is often referred to by VFR pilots as weather controlled airspace. Class E airspace exists in a number of places. The airspace from 14,500 feet above sea level up to 18,000 feet above sea level across the continental United States and coastal waters out to 12 nautical miles is all Class E. This lower limit of 14,500 feet above sea level is extended downward to 1,200 feet above the ground across widespread areas of the United States based on radar coverage. In order to protect instrument traffic conducting approaches in marginal weather conditions, Class E airspace is often further extended down to 700 feet AGL or even all the way to the surface. These 700 feet AGL or surface areas are usually customized to encompass portions of specific instrument approaches at an airport and are depicted on aeronautical charts. Class E airspace is also designated along federal airways called Victor Airways. Victor Airways are normally 8 miles wide, 4 miles to either side of the airway's centerline, and extend from 1,200 feet above the ground up to and not including 18,000 feet above sea level. There are no specific airplane equipment requirements to enter Class E airspace, and pilots are not required to establish communications with any air traffic control facilities. Class G airspace is uncontrolled airspace. It is all the airspace that is not designated as Class A, B, C, D, or E. Although Class G airspace is uncontrolled, federal aviation regulations still apply. Similarly to Class E, there are no specific airplane equipment requirements to operate in Class G, and pilots are not required to establish communications with any air traffic control facilities. While the vast majority of towered airports are designated Class D, C, or B, it is possible for an airport in Class E or G airspace to be towered. As you can see in 91126D and 91127C below, if a control tower is present and operational, you must establish radio communications prior to 4 nautical miles from the airport up to and including 2,500 feet AGL, even if that tower is in Class E or G airspace. Notice this area is identical to the typical size of a Class D airspace area.